A good day, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. Uh, well, as long as it's interesting to us. That's, that's very correct. Yes, and speaking of interesting, on today's episode, we've got a lot of things to talk about. Uh, a lot of trailers have dropped in, in recent days. Uh, a lot of new content has come out. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot to talk about. But, <laughs> but part of that uh, talking, it's, it's a conversation, right? And this is a live broadcast. Uh, we broadcast through Facebook Live. We, we invite all of our followers to join in. Uh, and, and we've got that open comment box. So we really, uh, we want to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. This show is 100% interactive. So your comments, questions, all that stuff is needed. I mean, and we'll talk about them as, of course, as long as they're interesting to us, of course. So, you know. Yes, that is that is right. So, uh, James, uh, we we took a week off last week. Yes, um, sir. You know, we we needed some R and R, if you will. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't know about you, but I feel rejuvenated. Oh yeah, um, man, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Now, I I can say one thing. Uh, we we had teased recently that we had a project that uh, a side project, a side hustle, if you will. Side, <laughs> uh, side that, hustle that uh, we're working on and we last week did spend some time uh, recording uh, our very first episode for uh, a new show uh, that we're yes, putting sir. together. Um, yes, we're not going to give away too many details this week, but I'm sure there will be more details to come, but I will yeah. say uh, it, it does involve the two of us as well right. as a third co-host. Yes. Um, and the main topic of content is Disney relevant. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, and we love, we talk about Disney a lot. We talk about yes, Disney a lot. So, yes. we, so much, so much that we felt like we needed to somewhat do a spin off, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> so uh, be on the lookout for that. I'm sure we'll have more to say in the coming weeks. Yeah, um, yeah. We're just trying to get a couple more out the bag and a couple more in the box before we, uh, before we, before we decide to uh, unbox it. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, one of the big things that we're going to be talking about later on in the show today is, uh, you know, a as you've heard through uh, some of the episodes where we've talked about the history of us, uh, we we've both discussed some of our time working in uh, and around the restaurant industry. And uh, I, I want to devote a little bit of time later in this episode to talk about uh, an experience I had over the weekend at, at a at a local restaurant. Uh, but for now, before we dive on into that, uh, I want to talk about uh, Loki. Have you seen Bro. the trailer? I, I am loving that trailer. Uh, I, I've always loved Tom Hiddleston as, as Loki. I think he has done a fantastic job with that role. Um, you know, the, the main antagonist, uh, of phase one, um, yeah. you know, coming back a fantastic role in, in all, in every Marvel film he's involved with. Yeah. Uh, he, he's always just like, he's, he's so perfect like <laughs> for Loki. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So for him to now have his own series, uh, where we're going to be dealing with the, uh, the time stream, if you will, as we know, right. Uh, spoiler alert, if you've been living under a rock, uh, <laughs> it, in Avengers Endgame, Loki, right. uh, the, the Avengers travel back in time to obtain the Tesseract or the, uh, space or, uh, what are the, the space gem or, right? No, I, uh, I, I can't remember. All I remember What's, is the Tesseract. I, yeah, just, it gives them the ability to portal. It's the blue, it's the blue one. <laughs> yes, yes, the blue one. I think it's the space stone. But uh, yeah. either either way, uh, they they travel back in time, and uh, Loki, who we know died in oh spoiler in Avengers in, uh, Infinity War, um, at the very beginning of the film, no less. Uh, he's Which actually is, there. That was painful. Yes, yeah. it was. It was. It, it, I think it let you know right away uh, this is about to get about to get real. Yeah. Um, but he's back, right? He come he because they went back in time. He's alive, and then he uses the tesseract to teleport or transport away. And 
uh, that it magically seems, falls at his feet. <laughs> right. So it it would seem that this new series is going to uh, have to do with how he potentially changes or can change the timeline. Um, yeah. So I, I'm really interested to see where this series goes. I'm super excited for it. Uh, I've enjoyed all of the trailers, all of the the looks at the the, the new characters we're going to be introduced to. Um, <laughs> that, that back and forth. I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, the back and forth between them in the uh, in the elevator, the elevator. like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just so good, yes. so good. Yeah, I yeah. I'm I'm excited. Speaking of excited and speaking about trailers, I'm going to switch it up. And we just saw released in the last couple of days, the teaser trailer for the Eternals. Oh, my Selma Hayek's voice just narrating. It can't be. I mean, that is, that is just, that's a sexy trailer. I go. I, uh, I, oh, man, the last 10 seconds of that trailer, um, <laughs> Hands down, one of the best uh, snippets uh, I've if seen. That, in... If that's not in the film, I'll be pissed. It has to be, right? I mean, uh, clearly the film looks like it's going to take pl- place and span thousands of years, right? Right. And so uh, I, I, they are called Eternals for a reason. So I would imagine they're still around. We just don't know them yet. And one of the things that Marvel has done a fantastic job of is introducing us to new characters. Yeah, uh, and so I, I'm sure they're going to do a fantastic job here, and uh, I'm I'm I don't know much about the Eternals personally. No, I mean uh, either. Like I think there was a I think there was a thing on IMDb that kind of talks about them a little bit, but I didn't really I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, and I I didn't know a whole lot about Guardians of the Galaxy before that came out, and I loved it. Uh, yeah, so. they, they what they do they do a great job of uh, fans people who are already fans of the properties are good with it. And then they, but they do a great job of introducing people who aren't familiar with it to it as well. So it's not like you, you're not having to know a huge amount of history. Uh, like if you, if you know some things you're like, Oh, that's, that's awesome. Like I, I know that blah, blah, but, but it's not one of those things where uh, if you don't know, you're you're gonna completely miss something, you know. Yeah. Which Marvel, I think, has done a great job of that. Uh, DC needs to to learn from, but we won't get into that. Since you invoked their name, there has been a rumor floating around this week, and I don't know if you've seen it, but that supposedly Warner Brothers is looking to sell the rights to the DC universe, and one of the proposed buyers is disney shut your mouth again this is a rumor it's it's caught a lot of sh- a lot of traction in the last couple of days um and there, I, there are reports that there is some truth to it um i, I could see the one to get i could see them tr- wanting to try and get rid of it i, I don't i mean not ri- rid of it but you know maybe try and uh, open up the money streams for something else but bro i don't know like if if Disney were to buy it, I don't know. I don't know how good that would be because then you have basically like, I mean, yes, you're getting all the money, but you have two competing uh, superhero franchises. And why do they have to be competing? Why can't good. they just be two unique streams? And as mm-hmm. we do know, there have been numerous crossover events throughout the history of the comics where Marvel and DC have done crossover events. They so have. imagine imagine getting to see the Avengers and the Justice League in the same film. Well, you have to get the core Justice League because there's just too many damn people in the Justice League. <laughs> there's too many damn people in the Avengers when you really think about it. But uh, That's true you, too, but... First of all, give give Kevin Feige, give him DC if if it should happen. And, uh, I mean, he'll, he'll make it good. You know, I've been so disappointed with the DCEU. Um, yeah, it, it just, I, it's, it is not, plus, I mean, well. it's just, it just, cha- and there's, there's already, there's already new changes coming and it just doesn't like we have, there's going to be a new Batman and there's going to be, you know, and like, yeah, uh, you know, we, 
I guess Aquaman sticking around. Uh, uh, well, I can't remember his name right now. Um, but yeah, Momoa is sticking around. Uh, apparently, uh, uh, Gal Gal Gadot is sticking around as well. So I mean, they're not going to be changing. I like. Are they going to give this this kid that was playing the Flash a movie? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did you, did you not know this? That there's a Flash movie that's being worked and coming out soon. Okay, because like I, I was, I. It'll I be a flat. Like, it sounds like it's going to be either Flashpoint or something along those lines because they're going to involve, uh, you know, multiple universes. They're they're trying to follow along with what uh, Marvel is doing. So it's just they, they. That's the problem is is that they can't. They they the way that they set those films up, it, they just they did it they did it too fast they jammed one of the reasons uh there's uh, there's multiple reasons i was upset about uh batman versus superman and we can talk that'll be that can be in a whole podcast on its own uh but but like they jammed in cyborg flash aquaman wonder they shoved them all in this one film and it was just like that's just too much like you can't just jam them in there and then all of a sudden, expect us to really care. It's just hard because I, I it mean, didn't feel no, natural. No, it didn't. It just like oh, the the way that I mean, Iron Man was supposed to be a one off movie, literally. And then when they saw how much money it made, or like started to kind of hear the rumblings of how much money this movie can make, they actually went back and shot that scene uh, with um, Nick Fury and Tony Stark. They went back and shot that to I'm not sure if we lost James, but uh, he is frozen on my end, so I'm not sure if you guys are still hearing him or seeing him, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and press on. Uh, the what next James five was years discussing was you know, the looking back that, at that uh, point in you know, time. Nick Fury building the just building up to the very first Avengers. It was all right there. And they did it smartly. But with DC, they just, they, they don't, they don't play. They just, they were like, Oh, we, we need to jump on this and jammed them all in there. Then spit us out. Uh, I don't even, it wasn't even that great of a movie <clears throat> for the justice league, which I haven't seen the Snyder cut, which I hear is actually a lot better and quite amazing. Um, but again, you have to you, you, take your time. You don't need to jam stuff out there. If you take your time, build it up, people get excited. And that's what Marvel did. And, and people are still excited about their properties. Absolutely. Um, so changing gears a little bit, uh, <clears throat> while still staying in the vein of Disney, um, right. Just posted uh, in the last 24 hours, and I just put up on our uh, Facebook page, Disney Parks blog has revealed the first look at the new uh, map for California Adventure, which includes the Avengers Campus. Yeah. Have you seen this? Did you look at this? Yeah, I did. I took a quick look at it real quick. Uh, that's exciting. That yeah, is absolutely so exciting. You know, it's a pretty small area, but there is already planned expansion to to include what I've heard is a uh, another e-ticket ride in that area that may be roller coaster based. Okay. Now, so, now, real quick, is is that going to be? Because uh, I didn't really, I didn't quick take. Uh, I took just a quick look at it, but is that going to be kind of a a, a Marvel? Is it? like going to be like labeled with a Marvel area. Like it's all in that kind of back corner where uh Gal the gardens of the galaxy, the escape or whatever. And then like, is that all, is it all back in that area? Yeah. Is that so all gonna be together? if you remember, there used to be a bugs land, that's all gone. And that is where, that's where it is. Okay. Yeah. The primary area is throughout where bugs land was uh, the old uh, it's tough to be a bug movie theater has now been turned into uh, the uh, Spider-Man web sling and adventure. Um, and that should be opening. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely, if you haven't looked at the map, take a look. It's a pretty small area right now, but again, as I already mentioned, there is planned expansion. Um, yeah. However, 
one of the things that also came out in the last couple of days uh, that ties into the Avengers Campus is the foodie guide to the Avengers Campus to include the PIM test kitchen uh, as well as the uh, Shwarma Palace. So I wanted to spend a couple of minutes talking about some of these food items. Uh, it's impressive. Obviously it's the PIM test kitchen, right? right? And so as we know, Hank Pym created the PIM particle, which uh, allowed for expansion or uh, uh, reduction uh, yeah. of, of atoms basically. And so uh you know, on this foodie guide, uh, they have numerous photos of these different food items. Um, you know, giant strips of bacon. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> you know, they've got a, they've got a, um, what they call a not so little chicken sandwich where they, they use a very large chicken, breaded chicken filet, uh, with a tiny little bun and some lettuce on top. So it's a chicken sandwich, but with a giant, a uh, piece of chicken, so it, it just it it's cute, right? Um, yeah, no, it, it's it's fun. It makes makes you feel like you shrank down. Yeah, so I, I do want to walk through or talk through uh, some of the food items. First, they are doing breakfast. Uh, they do have a breakfast menu. So they've got the calculated breakfast, which uh, equals e times two plus bracketed b plus b divided by t minus eggs. So is that uh, a sandwich? No, it's eggs two ways with smoked bacon, crispy potato bites, and okay. focaccia toast. Okay. Now, uh, real quick, uh, what time is breakfast served to? You know, it doesn't specify that. I assume just like most of the other Disney restaurants, it's usually done by about uh, 10 or 11 a.m. What time do they open? Um, all the parks are typically open by 9. So, and like an hour for breakfast? I mean, what, do you want breakfast all day? Uh, maybe. This, this ain't IHOP. <laughs> Miss, Miss IL is not working there. <laughs> Miss for those, of you, like for those of you that don't get, for those of you that don't get the reference, you'll get it one day. Missile, like oh, the rocket. Oh, God. Okay, so they also have the Impossible Quantum Garden Breakfast. So this is a plant-based folded omelet with impossible breakfast sausage, crispy potato bites, and focaccia toast. <laughs> focaccia toast seems to be the thing. <laughs> yes. They've got the ever-expanding Cinnapim toast. Oh, I like that. Baked Pim particle bread, an egg custard with cinnamon sugar topping, a fried egg, smoked bacon, and maple syrup. Hmm. That doesn't sound too bad. They've got a spoonful of cereal. So that's uh, bran flakes, bran flakes and raisins garnished with a yogurt covered pretzel and served with reduced fat milk and a ripe banana. Mm, I need, uh, I'm going to need some oat milk or uh, some almond milk. I can't have that, you know, that low fat milk. I mean, you can, you just got to pop a, pop a pill. Nah, and that's, I mean, yeah, and it's only going to help so much. But <laughs> They've got the Nano Egg Experiment 101. Softly arranged eggs and turkey bacon with toast. It's for small beans, ages three through nine. Oh, huh, okay. And then they also have the child's or small beans virgin, uh, version of the Cinnamon Mini Toast. All right. Let's, uh, let's go. Let's get those snacks, bro. Let's get all right. Snacks. All right. We got snacks. Here we go. A quantum pretzel. Okay. So so it's a 453.8 gram Bavarian style pretzel with sharp cheddar beer sauce. Oh, wait. Now, for those of you wondering, I am going to very, uh, how do you spell convert? B-E-R-T. Convert uh, um, grams to it's, ounces. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's see here. So how many grams did I say? 400 and what? 453.8. Let's see. 453.8. That is a one pound pretzel. Dear God. Yes, that is a large pretzel. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Man, you, now, now if you're really going to be weightlifting. 
If you're really feeling adventurous, that's where you get the Atomic Fusion Pretzel. This is a buffalo-style pretzel loaded with chicken, hot sauce, ranch dressing, blue cheese crumbles, celery, and dill-pickled carrots. Yes. About that life. I'm about that. I would. Yes. Oh, that sounds I figured, delicious. I figured you would be. You got the Pingo Doce? It's a refreshing lemon lime with a vanilla kick. This distinctively green beverage from Avengers lore is available only at the Avengers campus. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. You also, one other quick drink, a Proton PB&J Punch. It's Minute Maid Lemonade with peanut butter and strawberry flavors, peanut butter infused whipped cream, and peanut butter pretzel spheres. Hmm. Might have to give that a try. Now we've got our lunches, dinners, or what they're calling the blue particle specials. Okay, okay. First off is our $100 Pimini. Pimini. <laughs> this is a ridiculously large sandwich that is with salami, rosemary ham, provolone, sun-dried tomato spread on toasted focaccia with marinara dipping sauce and an arugula salad. This feeds six to eight people. Dang, bro. I'm, I didn't know it was all on it. And you said $100. I, ooh, that might be worth it, though. I, I'm sorry. You're going to eat a $100 sandwich yourself for six to eight people? Oh, no, God. Oh, God, no. I mean, I'd have to have some people. I mean, like, I'd have to have people with me, for sure. Like, that's not, like, something I just drop on. I'd be like, hey, look, we all go eat this sandwich. <laughs> Kick in is, bro. But, like, you know, I mean, because I think that, I mean, if it feeds six to eight people, I mean, you're uh, you're going to pay that. You're going to pay probably more than that just for, you know, if you were to get multiple different meals. But with that one, and you can feed all the people, cool. We've got the PB Cubed Superb Sandwich. Warm peanut butter and jelly with banana candied bacon on Pim Particle Bread with micro banana smoothie and crispy potato bites. Hmm. I don't know. How about the Caesar salad with a colossal crouton? <laughs> crouton? <laughs> so this is hearts of romaine, kalamata olives, pickled onions, Caesar dressing, garlic crouton, and Parmesan crisps. Uh, I, I mean, I'd, I'd, if I want to eat healthy, I can do that at home. Well, I mean, I, I might have, I mean, that's something I might have at one point in time. Like if I've already, if I'm kind of, if I'm feeling peckish. <laughs> All right. How about the impossible spoonful rigatoni and ditalini pastas, plant-based meatballs. So an impossible burger meatball. Uh, tomato sauce, dairy-free Parmesan, and micro basil. Uh, maybe. I, I like my whole thing is with the Impossible Meats. It's just everything that they have to do to make it like either like taste like meat. It, it's it's not anything healthier. No. And honestly, I, I don't see the value. You're you're paying an extra two to five dollars for that burger, and yeah. It's, like just get a if you want if you want uh, just give me a a I mean ugh, a Boca burger or something <laughs> gross uh, yeah. for for dessert they're offering the Choco Smash candy bar which is dark chocolate peanut butters caramel nougat and chocolate brownie ooh wee so that that sounds yummy and then they've got a kids menu which is basically all the same stuff but smaller portions smaller portions yeah um you've got a Pim Tasting Lab, where they're doing a bunch of different uh, drink concoctions. Uh, so I'll, adult, I'll blow th ad adult beverages? I'm going to blow through these with a quickness. Okay. All right. First, you've got the Honey Buzz that has gin, lemon juice, and honey syrup with a honey straw. Yes. The Experiment, which is tequila, Minute Maid lime juice, mango habanero syrups with mango popping mm -hmm. pearls. You've got the Honey Fusion, which is gin, Minute Maid lemonade, honey syrup, IPA, and a honey straw. Hmm. Molecular Meltdown, marshmallow milk stout, and vanilla ice cream topped with miniature marshmallows. Okay, okay. The Regulator, tequila, lime juice, mango and habanero syrup, wheat ale, and mango popping pearls. 
Okay. The particle fizz, hard seltzer with cherry pearls. And then they've got draft beers, hand seltzer, hard seltzers, and wine. All uh, Budweiser, right? Uh, I I don't know. I, I they, are they Anheuser? I don't remember if they deal with Anheuser Busch or not. I'm not sure. Then you've got your shawarma palace where they've they've got a couple of shawarma items. Uh, there's also going to be a new dessert stand near Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout where they'll be selling yes. a uh, cosmic cream orb. What are you doing, man? So ice cream. Making a, what, are, what are you doing over there? Don't worry about it. Just, just, just keep talking. <laughs> All right. This is, a, this is a little weird because this is a live broadcast and because I can see him. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on over there, but uh, it, it, it's it's a little distracting. <laughs> well, because we were talking about food, and we were talking about food, and actually the next, my next two things actually deal with food, so I was just getting them ready. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so, uh, Terran Treats, so that's uh, going to be next to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, where they'll have a Cosmic Cream or Orb, which is a Krispy Kreme puff with whipped raspberry cheesecake mousse and the sweet spiral ration, which is a churro spiral with unique flavors. And in the photo, it's green. So I'd be interested to check that out. I mean, they probably just use green food coloring, I'm sure, but I would, I'd be interested to see what that tastes like. Yes. And they're, they'll, they'll also be selling some new novelties. So you've got uh, glowing uh, pin particle capsules and glowing pin particle discs. Um, uh, I, I've been told or I've heard that the, the, the capsules are for you to like drop in your drink or whatever to make it glow. Like those, I, <clears throat> like the ice cubes. That, yeah. Like those, those ice cubes and stuff. Yeah. That, that makes some money off them, I feel it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there will be a oversized Pingo Dose soda can. The Infinity uh, Gauntlet, the Iron Man Infinity Gauntlet, which is a, a favored way of you being able to hold your Coca-Cola bottles. Nice. nice. And uh, a pint-sized pints mini beer flight. So it's pint-sized pints mini beer flight on an Ooh. oversized ruler. And uh, that, those those are for yours to keep, I believe, so... Oh, that be, I'd probably do that. That sounds like that sounds fun, and and yeah. you know, that sounds like a novelty I, I would like to have. Yeah. So speaking of food, I know that you uh, mentioned you had something you wanted to talk about. Yes. Okay. So uh, a number of weeks ago, we talked about it. Uh, what you call it? Yes. Yes. I finally found it. A who's he? What's it? I know you can't really see it because the light and everything. But who's he? What's it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, we so talked about these. So Another they look very ago. similar. What's the difference? They do. So okay. So uh, uh, what you might call it is made with chocolate, peanut flavored crisp, and caramel. Okay. And a hoozy what's it is chocolate, chocolatey crisp, and peanut butter candy bar. So okay. I was, yeah. So I'm just gonna kind of I'm just gonna break them open, and uh, I don't know if you can really see. Yeah. No, this light is awful. But I mean, I can see. So, okay. So it looks like a vi- they, they are similar in shape. Uh, and, and this is the who's what's it that we're looking yes. at. And it appears to look like there's tiny little bits of crisp rice, crisp rice, chocolate covered crisp rice in the middle. Yeah, of and then there's, and then there's like the little peanut butter layer right there on top. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like if you were to take, it looks like as if you were to take a, 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 a very small, thin Reese's and add uh, a crunch bar to it, maybe. Is that, what's it taste like? You're eating it right now. You know what? Your description is actually really good. Because if you were to take a Reese's peanut butter cup, just add a thin layer of peanut butter, and then uh, put those Rice Krispie treats underneath, That'd be it. That'd be hmm. it right there. That was really good. That was actually, that was really good. And then this is the whatchamacallit. So these have been around for quite some time. <laughs> Can you see that one? Yes. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, whatchamacallit, it, it's more of a uh, nougat-based uh, center. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't so had one. That, 
the caramel and then the kind of peanut crisp. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I've, I've never had a Hoosie. What's it now? I'm going to have to look for them and try one um, because that looked good. And uh, we are not getting paid by whoever makes those, by the way. No, We're, we talked about them a number of weeks ago and I found them. And so I was like, I bought them. <laughs> Fair enough. So uh, switching gears a little bit, James, we, uh, we a couple weeks ago or about a week ago posted uh, about the upcoming and at the time upcoming NBA play in playoff. Yeah. Uh, and we, we put our predictions of who we thought would make it in. I nailed the West just to be clear. You did. And you uh, did. one of the two teams I predicted for the East got in uh, not in the slot that I said, but they got in. And so, then uh, I think I had I think I had one as well. So I was seventy five percent. You uh, were correct. Yes, I mean I thought that uh, I was I was barely fifty percent. I thought that the Lakers were going to go into the eighth seed, but they end up going in the seventh, and Warriors got knocked out. And then um, I don't remember who I said for the other one, but I think it was. I think I said – I don't remember if I said Boston or not. Either way, I'm going to give you Either my way. prediction right now, which is uh, the 76ers win the championship. <laughs> oh, oh, we Really? Yes, I, I am predicting a uh, 76ers-Suns finals. Yeah, I was going to say Suns, but do uh, you think – how and how many? 76ers win if if, if they 70, if and when they get there. 76ers win in six. Okay. 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 So championship going back to the east, huh? Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. All right. It's Note a long it, time coming for them. So uh Note it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully AI will be in the building if they uh, if they get there. So we yes. at least get to see them. So uh, that is, yeah. that is my prediction for the NBA finals. Okay. Um, okay. So uh James, uh, have you gotten caught up on Secrets of Heritage House yet? Bruh, I am completely caught up. What? I am 100% caught up, even with the new episode, bruh. Wow. I, I, just, I just finished the, uh, I just heard uh, episode, what was it, 17 last night. Wow. Are you, so are you listening to them live when they broadcast, or are you waiting until the following oh, week? I'm just, I, 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 I waited. I wait. I just wait until the Saturday when it goes up. And like yesterday, okay. I was like, "Oh, hey, I haven't. Uh, I, the other episode should have been up." So I, um, so I went and listened. Actually, I'll tell you what ended up happening is, is that um, I, I got called in early. So I was working one day, and I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna check these episodes out." And so I kind of started listening to them. Now, yes, parts of it are rough. Like some of the voices, I'm, I'm not too keen on. But the story. <laughs> Like once I finally got through like the first like maybe four or five episodes when it really started get and everything started really getting juicy, I was like, oh, it drew me in, bro. It drew me in. And this past episode, <laughs> woo, man. Yeah. I was like, so, oh, oh. <laughs> so obviously, episode five has already aired, uh, or or episode eighteen, as you know it. Um, yeah. Uh, has just aired on Sunday live. Uh, it'll be rebroadcast this Friday, and then it'll be available to you Saturday morning. Yes. Um, what do you think of your boy so far? Bruh, hey, LB. Ju- I'm you. sorry, Junior. <laughs> yes, no. Bruh, no, not- <laughs> hey, hey, you know, uh, I was, I, I, I love hearing you. I love hearing you uh, do your thing on there, man. It's good. You, you're, that's, uh, that's, that's old school, Mark. That's, that's, old school mark that i remember like the voice your voice is uh it's out you sound young in that you say <laughs> you yeah, it's, young. it's a lot of fun um you know we're we're i'm recording tonight for for another future episode and uh, nice. you know i'm very much enjoying it we're, we're coming close to the end of wrapping up season two i'm hoping uh i'm hoping to to still be around and get to do season three well i i still don't know what's planned for the future and i find out a lot of the stuff only a few weeks before you guys hear it. So it's. Yeah, no, I, I like, I am, like I said, some of the voices are rough for me, uh, uh, but 
but overall the it's the story that really drew me in it was it was like it's it's kind of, it's a mystery wrapped inside some sci-fi supernatural stuff and so it's got it's got a lot of the little elements that i like in a i you know what i'm not gonna lie like i'd almost like to see this as i'd almost like to see it shot i I'd would like, too i would almost like to see it shot because I, I feel like this would be a really good like cw show yeah, or something you know, something along those lines because it definitely it has all the it has all the makings of a good TV show. Uh, the story's solid. Um, the characters are. I mean, there's some. Uh, there, I mean, they they give enough of a character to to draw you in, but then as like secrets of those characters start coming out, like. Uh, 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 not Izzy, but um, don't give away any of the secrets now. No, I'm just saying one of their one of their husbands. Uh, I can't remember the name, but uh, but one of the the husbands, like he cut, he just shows up and like, bro. I'm like, bro, like you are so out of pocket right now. <laughs> so, so like they it, it like like I said it. I was really kind of skeptical at first, but um, but once I finally got through the first few episodes, and it really drew me in, man. It really drew me in, and I'm I'm. I'm really excited for this show. Good, good. I'm glad to hear you finally got caught up. I'm glad you're enjoying it, and uh, hopefully we can keep doing you proud. Uh, yeah. And with that, I, you know what time it is? It's, uh, oh, yeah, we're going to skip random facts today. <laughs> you don't, you sure? You, you, we, we can do it if you want. We, yeah, you got okay, a good real, one? Yeah, real quick, because actually, because okay. we, t- we were talking about all this food and everything, so um, this is something that actually kind of hit me. I didn't even realize this. So uh, the world wastes about one billion metric tons of food each year so 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 combined food waste worldwide yeah one billion metric tons yeah so actually it's 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 actually um one uh 900 931 million metric tons that's what they say about and this was from this is from a uh 2019 account um and it basically surveyed it surveyed 54 countries finding the majority of food waste at 61 percent comes from homes while restaurants and other food service products uh 26 percent uh, produce 26 percent of food waste grocery store uh grocery stores make up 13 percent of food waste um so yeah so 61 percent uh so uh, majority, uh, six, like sixty-one percent, comes from uh, from homes, while restaurants make up twenty-six percent and grocery stores make up thirty-one percent or thirteen percent. So, we need to make sure when we're buying food for home that we're looking at expiration dates, all that kind of good stuff, and using it within the proper amount of time so that we're not wasting food because that's not good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. And I mean, I, and I know like, um, I know with going to uh, working in restaurants, what always killed me was like, there's so many people that don't have anything to eat and we're just throwing this food away, um, which always kind of killed me. Um, but I understand like, because, you know, if somebody gets sick and they want to sue because they got some food from someplace, which, but but at the same time, like that's just that kills me as well. But then I know grocery stores because stuff gets picked over and and everything else. That food um, mostly, and I would say, there's some. I mean, I know I throw away quite a bit of soda in certain places, but um, vegetables and stuff like that they they do go bad. So, yeah. and, and and just to be clear, just to try and uh, put a, a a number to it so 931 metric tons 931 metric tons million it, no no i know but oh, i'm saying oh. 931 metric tons <laughs> is the equivalent of two million pounds oh wow so now add six more zeros behind that okay so so we're, we are talking about over two over a trillion tons Okay. Wow. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, a trillion wow. pounds. Over a trillion pounds. My apologies. I get all com- confused. That 
that actually sounds yeah, so this actually sounds nice in the metric tons when you put it into real pounds it's like oh that's even worse yeah. wow okay yeah and with that i feel like uh i need a dance break how about you oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah let's do it All right, and we're back. So, uh, James, I got to tell you about an experience I had over the weekend. What's up, I, bro? Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I went out to eat. Um, you know, we, we had a planned lunch with a, a friend from work, and uh, we, we decided uh, to go to a restaurant, and I'm not going to name the restaurant, um, but it is, a, uh, it is a chain restaurant, and they are uh, 50s diner style. Yeah, yeah, um, and I feel they, it. They do burgers and fries and shakes and stuff like that. And um, it was the worst experience that I have had at a restaurant in at least five plus years. Really? Uh, yeah, it was. Now, to be fair, I, I will give them a little bit of credit in that they did have signage on their doors that they were short staffed. Okay. And, okay. and I get it. A lot of businesses right now are short staffed because people don't want to go back to work. Well, there's a lot of people that are happy collecting their unemployment because they're getting that extra $300 a week from the feds. And you know, there are a lot of lazy people that are just sitting at home because they're probably making more on unemployment than they would going and getting a job. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously that's my opinion and you no, might not agree I, with it. But. No, I mean, I, I, I think that there, I agree in certain parts. I mean, like they, they, like you should, you should basically have to go back. Like once, once, like if your industry wasn't open and now is open, get back to work. <laughs> yeah. I, it, there are, as far as I can tell, there are no businesses out there that aren't looking for people. So go yeah. back to work. Yeah. Um, now, with that being said, we walked in and uh, we sat down right away because our our friend that we were meeting with already had a table. Uh, and when we sat down, she told us, hey, you know, I I've already ordered, uh, you know, some uh, bacon cheese fries. So those should be coming. Okay, cool. Um, you know, that, that sounds yummy. And she already had a drink. So that, that looked like it was a good sign. So we sat down and it was probably five minutes before a server came to our table to ask us if we wanted anything to drink um, and give us some menus. Wow. At this point, we still didn't have roll-ups. And for those of you not in the restaurant industry, a roll-up is, you know, your silverware, your fork, knife, whatever. And uh, so five minutes in, we're finally getting a drink order placed and we still don't have roll-ups. So we're sitting there and we're talking and about another five minutes go by and we see that our server is, she has a large table, um, probably uh, 10 or 12 top that she's serving and, and, and mm -hmm. she is clearly giving them a lot of attention. So, you know, kind of look at her and I think she realized, oh, they, they need their drinks. So, uh, so now we have drinks, but we still don't have fries that were ordered before our arrival that's what i was gonna ask you have you got the fries yet no so you know you worked in the restaurant industry even to the point of supervision management how long does it take to cook fries uh like less than five minutes like yes. it's about about i'd say give it like three minutes or so yeah three minutes to cook them then you add your bacon throw on some cheese put it under the salamander for 30 seconds and yeah boom send it out it's yeah so and they do and they do shoestring fries at the place I think you're talking about. So it's not like it's not like steak fries, which took a little bit more, but yeah, no. So you would think five minutes, right? No, it was well. Uh, so I ended up asking our our lunch mate, "Hey, how long before we got here did you order those?" And she mentioned it was you know five minutes at least before we got there. So now we're at twenty minutes from the time she's ordered, and now we finally get the fries. And now we're going to take your food order. So I've learned by experience at a lot of restaurants. I'm a very simple guy. I like my food plain. Yeah, I, yeah you do. I like, <laughs> you know, if I'm getting a burger, I want the bun, the burger, 
and the cheese and the bacon. And which is what I got. I got a bacon cheeseburger, but I made sure to say, I want it plain with no sauce right. because I've learned by experience. Some places plain just means no lettuce. Some places, yeah, you right. know, it means you. So I say plain, no sauce to be clear. No sauce. Right. Um, oh, wait, so, wait, wait. Can I, can I guess, can I guess did, uh, oh, your burger come out with sauce on it? <laughs> my burger came out with everything on it. What the hell? Yeah, so I had to kick it back because. It, oh my god! Now, to be fair, it did when they came when it came back. It was a fresh burger, and it was still piping hot. So, okay. it, and it was quick. So it's not like okay. it took the same okay. amount of time. But from the time that we placed our food order to the time we got our food order was about thirty minutes. Mm. Now, okay, so how long does it take to wow. cook a burger, James? Uh, I mean, I don't even, I can't even really, I think it takes, I think it like at most, at most, it'll take about 10 minutes at most. That's, and that's, and that's, that's, that's everything, right? Um, that's putting it all together. That's yeah. Not that's just... put, that, that, I'm talking about from the time that you, you cook, the, you start if depending on like, okay, when I worked it, we put it on, we put it on belts and then we put it on and then we put it on a flat top. But, uh, from the time that it goes but from the time it goes on the on the grill to the time that it comes out or is being placed in the window to be taken to your table should it take a actually under 10 minutes but give or take let's say 10 minutes okay just to be nice and i could i could get on board with 10 minutes absolutely heck i could get on board with 12 minutes uh if we're talking about from the time the order is placed to the time it's in the window if it's busy if it's busy, maybe 12 minutes, but from what it sounds like, there sounds like there was one big party and then you guys, I mean, I'm sure there was other people there, right? There was a couple other tables, but okay. it was not nothing, busy. Okay. Nothing to where like, okay. Yeah. No. So, so I'm noticing as we're sitting there and, and waiting, um, I'm noticing tables that came in after us are getting their food. Oh, that and is infuriating. And it's not like they're getting salads, which you would expect are quicker. They're getting burgers just like us. So, so that was frustrating. Now, something I, I neglected to mention was that I had ordered a milkshake. This place is extremely well known for their milkshakes. Mm -hmm. um, not as good as Red Robin, but they, they, they're pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I, I ordered a chocolate peanut butter milkshake. And right. traditionally, they come in a glass, you know, the same type of glass they use for their sodas, filled up. I would say nine, 85 to 90 percent of the way with some whipped cream on the top and then a, a tin on the side. That's right. usually a third full. Right. My milkshake comes out. The cup is not even halfway full with whipped cream, and the tin has almost nothing in it. Wow. So I sent that back and said, I'm not paying for it because I'm I'm not paying six dollars for a milkshake that Really, I, I could make a better one at home for probably a dollar fifty. Um, wow! So uh, then, you know, we've got our kid with us. So yeah, we, so asked, we asked you, did you have, did you have your daughter? So yeah, yeah. So we we asked for a water for her, and the the, the server was bringing out to go cups for that big table I was talking about, and she's bringing them out, you know, in, in, in the nice plastic cups with the lids and everything. She brings out a cup for our two year old kid with no lid on it. <laughs> what? So we asked for a lid. Okay. Not the end of the world. We asked for a lid. How long do you think it took to get a lid? Oh, uh, I don't even, the, the, what you had to pay like 10 minutes for a lid. It took long enough that my wife had to get up and go over to the counter to try and figure out where the lids were to get it for herself. That's how long. Oh, that's ridiculous. And guess what else? When she went to go get that lid, she also took my soda over to their fountain to get me a refill and got the refill herself. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. So, wow. So then was this, was this server? Okay. Was this oh, server new? So we find out after my burger comes out and it's wrong that this is her second day on the job and that she has never served before. Wow. Yes. Wow. 
So I, I can't blame her too much, no, that's right? The... It's not her fault that this company felt it appropriate to put somebody that's only worked there now Two on their days. second day. On her second day. She's only worked there one day. This is her second, second day. day. Bruh. You're going to give her a party nonetheless, and then on top of that, you're going to give her another, uh, at least, was it just you guys that she was taking care of at that point in time? No, no. She had, uh, at one point, she had that large party that was finishing up, us right. and two other tables. Bruh, that... That's a lot for, I mean, even, even a season server with a, with, with a 10, 12 top, that is hard enough. Uh, I mean, with, and you add on top of that, like two, three other tables, bruh, that's, that's tough for even a season server. Agreed. But for somebody on their second day, why? No. Like, I would have given her the party, and you take care of that. And the other people, you know, will take care of everything or maybe like one other table, but everybody else will take care of everything else. You go ahead and just take like, get that done, focus on that. And then, you know, once they're done, we'll get you some more tables. But no. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Wait, uh, and was there no. What, now. Is this second day. Out of training. Or is this... No, no. Second day working for this company. Oh, hell no. I wouldn't even... I wouldn't even... Well, let's... Let me go back to what my... With my experiences. So, when I was training, we would have somebody with us. I think uh, servers were five days. And so it was like the first day they were just kind of following second day, they were starting to, you know, it, like really just kind of help out. And I mean, it, that would happen first day too, but mostly kind of get drinks, all that kind of stuff. Then, then it was like third day when they start taking orders. And then, um, uh, the fourth day, they really, it's really kind of you following them because they're, they're getting ready. Cause then on that fifth day, it's them like they're they're It's their show. They're doing everything. Wait, so you're saying at minimum a person, even even an experienced server coming to work for Red Robin, would spend at minimum four days of just training before being let loose. Yeah, I mean, like it'd be four, it'd be at least four days. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to. It'd be at least four days of just learning how Red Robin worked. Mm-hmm. It was just four days. I mean, and and you you went through that as well. So I mean, so you know that with I went four through eight weeks of training. Right, you went through eight because because you were going into management there, um, which you had to learn everything. Mm -hmm. And so like so literally, it's like a week. It's it's literally like a week of just learning our system. So they would come in, we'd do book work, and then we'd start our shift. They, the f next day, book work, tests and stuff as well, and then do our, our shift and everything. So it was five days of that. On, and then like your fifth day, it was kind of a simpler day, but you would have four tables. We'd watch those tables. We'd make sure you got everything good before we put you on the floor on your own. Yeah. And I did this with pretty much it. And, and I, I'll say like, something that was kind of proud for me is that pretty much everybody that came through red Robin after I became a, a, a lead trainer came through me at least one day, at least one day, uh, even heart of the house. I dealt with some of the heart of the house guys and, but mostly it was front of house people. So pretty much all servers came through me at least one day, bartenders, everything came hosts came through me at least one day. So like, for her on her second day, I will I, I I will applaud her, but I will say shame on the company for putting her in that situation. Absolutely, and you know, uh, so we get the we to top it off, we we get the bill near the end, and she uh, she gives it to me, and my milkshake's still on there, so I had to send that back because that needed to yeah. be taken off. 
What, then she brings that? it back. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. It's, it okay. gets better. So then she brings the bill back, gives me a pen, and proceeds to stand there staring at me until I filled out the, the receipt. Oh, no, child. No, no, no. So clearly no concept of uh, walk away, let the person fill out the form, you can come get it after they leave. Like She stood there watching me fill out the form. Oh, bad etiquette. Was there a man? Was there a, no manager there? If there was, they never came by. And you would think oh. with the numerous issues we had, sending back a milkshake, having to get drinks on our own, having to come ask for a lid because it took so long, sending back a burger, you would think having to have the milkshake taken off the receipt, that had to be done by a manager or supervisor. So you would think that we would have had a table visit at some point. Nope, didn't happen. If you had even like if you had sent the burger back, a manager should have brought that out to you. That's right. That's right. Sending the sending the milkshake back. Mm, I mean, that's kind of it. But like, did you get a new milkshake or no? Nope. No, no, no. This is that. Now, when you told me about this, what happened, you didn't tell me all the particulars because I knew you were saving it. But mm -hmm. that is ridiculous. Like I oh said, my God, that's ridiculous. Like I said, I think the last, the last incident that I can recall, the last time I went out to eat anywhere and it was this bad, and I don't even want to say it because of how strongly I feel good about this company, but the last time I think I had service this bad was that – Disney's California Adventure. Mm. And, and we will talk about that later. But I, I think we, James and I and my, my parents, went to Disneyland and Disney's California Adventure back in 2013. And uh, we ate at, uh, I believe it's called Ariel's Grotto. And uh, we, we yeah. had a really bad experience. And if you want to know how bad it was, is that me... I had to go talk to the manager because that guy was about to lose it. Yeah. I, I knew that if I went and talked to them, I would, I would probably get kicked out of the park or something. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, that is going to have to be for another day. We will, Absolutely. we will share that experience. Oh, Hey Mark. Um, yes. By the way, I, I forgot to tell you this is that we have locked down another special guest. Oh, okay. When, when, when should we expect this person? So is this the last week? Uh, is this the last week of May? Uh, yeah, next, next week would be June 1st. Well, hey, expect him here next week, baby. What? <laughs> okay, well, uh, you want to tell us who it is or anything about them? Well, I, 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 won't get, I, won't give, I won't give the name away. I won't give the name away. But, but he is a, a, an actor. A director he is a ucla grad he is uh he's a teacher he is a mentor he and now now he is a motivational speaker who goes all across the country he's been number, numerous places around the world if it's the guy message. i think you're talking about this guy has done ted talks before is it yes is he that has. Who i'm thinking of I believe you. You know who I'm talking about, baby. Oh my! Wait, we actually wait, wait, wait. We went to we went to we actually went to school with this man. When did you lock this down? Uh, I locked this down officially last week. Okay, okay. So I, we had yeah. I am excited for this one then. Yes. Um, you know, I enjoy whenever we have the opportunity to talk and interview uh, unique people. Uh, you know, I've enjoyed our talks with Disney Plus's uh, Encore Brian Allen Hobbs and uh, Blizzard Nyanix, uh Joe Magdalena. Uh, yeah. But uh, this one, this one, this one's pretty good. Uh, this guy's pretty high profile too. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm really excited. Um, I, and actually, because I, I hit him up on his, because uh, I, I actually have his phone number. So I hit him up, and so, um, so he was more than happy to help two fellow Alonians 
<laughs> um, to to help us out. So he's he's going to be here next week. He's really excited. Um, we're just going to kind of talk to him about how uh, what he's been up to, and then uh, kind of also I want to know. I wanted to know how uh, COVID really affected what he was doing. So so we'll get into that. All right. Well, I think with that, uh, it's time for us to wrap it up here. Uh, yes, sir. I want to thank uh, everybody out there for listening. And if you missed any part of this bod- broadcast, uh, obviously go back. Uh, it'll be up uh, in podcast form in just a few hours uh, via Anchor, Spotify, Al- Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcast, Breaker, Google Podcast, Radio <laughs> Public, all the fun places. Uh, and, you know, of course, we'll have our YouTube video up at some point. Um, and, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good time. I know we did. And uh, we'll see you in a week.